Oh god, okay. And you brought Britain? Okay. Hawaii. That's it. That's the joke. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I just have too much free time. I sure wish I could spend it on speed 5 for the next 10 hours waiting to get an achievement with minimal interaction. Well, you're in luck because the Hawaii achievement, while being relatively easy, is so lengthy that fewer people have done it than the Khan achievement. And we're about to find out exactly why. So, Hawaii, one of the countries of all time, certainly does exist. Ah uh, yes, that's something I remember about the Hawaii tree. Most of the missions are entirely out of the way. Well, the AI will absolutely always try and kill you, so the best thing we can try for now is to grab an alliance. We can fabricate some claims, maybe deal with the estates, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh right, so Hawaii's flavor is actually in the form of its events, not its mission tree. Most of the stuff in the mission tree is just copy-paste from the rest of the Polynesians, which is why it makes so little sense to have all these diplomatic interactions. But the events are actually something interesting. So every year, for the first half or so, we can't really declare war, and we can't really develop anything either. Oh yeah, I completely forgot they also kept the Sunset Invasion one, like own five provinces in Europe, as Hawaii, right. Now, you may be thinking the first order of business as Hawaii would be to unite the kingdom and take all the islands, and I'm here to tell you that you're actually wrong. The first thing to do as Hawaii is just develop. That's it. Everyone else starts off with a whole bunch of ships because, yeah. And 99% of the time, someone's gonna ally someone else, which means you're going to be outshipped most of the time. But if we wait long enough, we can also get our one ally to help us out, which should even out the numbers, and we can increase our own number of ships. Early game, I usually like to grab a lot of manpower development, but in this case, our ships will be our main forces. So spending Diplo power is going to give us a little bit more force limit as well as sailors. So we'll go back and forth on admin and Diplo to get as much money and sailors as possible, and then we can dump the rest in military. Well, that's awkward. Let's see how this works out. Well, rolling two zeros in a row is not a good start, that's for sure. Okay. That was the second battle, the first one I lost super hard, but in a weird twist of fate, my ally got sieged down which forced his ships to leave the harbor, and now we're able to stand here for a little bit while I go and siege down the target. I am not proud of the number of men I had to hire for this, but as long as it gets done. Alright, there we go. So basically, we have to siege both of these guys at the same time. For that to happen, we have to be extremely lucky. Theoretically, the main target is going to be less likely to peace out than Maui. So if we siege this down first, we should be able to grab both. Okay, that's one down. And the other. And just like that, even though it's not our war, we can grab them both. And of course, we're going to dissolve the alliance because we don't need it anymore. And we can take the first of several mid-missions. Alright, there's feudalism. Let's exploit some dev and pay off the loans. I just realized I missed out on the opportunity to say missions. <sighs> anyway, we can embrace feudalism and we have rebels. Right. That truce is up, which means it's time for us to declare the war. And now we should have no problem dealing with the rebels. Now we can change our country to Hawaii, which does literally nothing. But we do get a permanent claim on northern Polynesia. It's a shame that includes literally one other province, but you, you take what you can get. Now we have 40 prestige, so we can pick this up as well. And it seems we're going to have a whole lot of crown lands to be taking. So this is it. This is the Hawaii experience. This is the whole thing. We don't even get to explore until we're done with three of our idea groups. Three of them. Three entire idea groups. And then we can recruit explorers and conquistadors. Right. Well, maybe we can go and grab some friends along the way. Hmm. That might be a little more difficult than I thought. Maybe with religious diplomats, but that's a little risky considering the influence. Ah, well. Nothing? Seriously? Huh. Tough crowd. Ah, there we go. Right, let's pick up some more diplo power. And maybe some allies. Alright, time to dev the renaissance. Now let's do some more exploiting. And I could even build a church this time. <sighs> uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, let's see here. We can embrace the renaissance. That's something. Oh. Oh no. Finally, I can do something. Alright, now instead of clicking a button once every five years, I can click two. 
All right, let's kick out these advisors. I'll take this one and I'll focus on Diplo. Now, I like mission trees, like, a lot. I think mission trees are like the most important part of a country because, sure, the events are cool and all that, but the mission tree is really where stuff starts to shine. And among other things, like the description of this unit not really being finished, I'm pretty sure Hawaii got lost in there somewhere with the Leviathan update. Didn't really get the love it deserved. Personally, I would take these two mission trees out entirely. This one on the right just doesn't make any sense at all. This one on the middle right is almost entirely useless, until eventually you go down and grab an extra colonist. And the Hawaiian ambition should probably be the traditions. Start off with global settler increase and recruitment of explorers and conquistadors, and then at the end maybe give extra lightship combat ability and yearly navy tradition. I've been thinking about making a mod, and if I were to do that, I'd probably do something for Hawaii. I don't know, let me know what you think. Now I just developed a little bit more to finish off this mission here. This one's actually pretty useful, reduced autonomy for the rest of the game. I can also pick up this colonist real quick. And with that colonist, we can pick up Grant New World Charters, and also more settlers. Now I can sell off a few titles for some quick cash here, and that will also allow me to finish off this mission for stability and some extra points. The rest of these missions are sort of okay. I'll probably wait until I need them before I use them, since both the king and the heir are a little bit old. Now, oh, speaking of which, let's get some more royal marriages. Okay, not the best air. Am I gonna toss you into the ocean? Hmm. Yeah, he's going into the ocean. There we go. Ah, what a nice name, Mana. That's topical. Hey, the first colony's done. It looks like the new world is way too far for us to spawn colonialism. So for now, it's probably in our best interest to move south. Right, well, there's no colonialism yet and it's 1501. We can also grab some more ideas and this will probably be expansion. Did my colonial range not extend, like, at all? That's kind of weird. Well, I could colonize over here instead. Maybe grab a few claims on these guys. This last reform is probably going to be the monarchy one. I don't know if it matters too much. Now, with the second colonists, we can bridge a few of the gaps we've made here. And there goes the king. Okay. Well, that's actually okay. In fact, the queen consort is pretty good, so I'm probably going to extend this as well. I've also been waiting for these royal marriages to die so I can finally dissolve the alliances. And now I'm ready to fight. Easy enough. Alright, there goes the siege. Now, I should be able to do the same thing over here. Here we go. It just occurred to me that we have cavalry units. I don't think there were horses on Hawaii. Man, 1.33 putting all these forts on every capital? Is it really gonna drive me insane? I am not looking forward to New Zealand. With all these islands sieged, I could decide to take them like this or through this. Well, let's take the extra money. And I'll take these two. With Diplotech 7, we now have extra colonial range, and it looks like we can finally reach the New World, okay. Well, I'd much rather go to the Galapagos Islands and see if I can reach Panama, so let's start searching down there. One of my favorite parts about Polynesia is that you just have absolutely no idea how big your country actually is. It's not like your country's name stretches across or anything. So our country looks like just a couple of islands here and there, but our development is like half of Poland's. Now we have three colonies at a time. It might be taking half of my economy, but that's probably worth it. And expansion ideas are done to give us a little bit more global settler increase. Alright, we've discovered the coast of China, and it appears Ming is already dead. Well, that was fast. It hasn't even been a hundred years yet. You know, I just had an interesting run idea. So when Ming collapses, they always split into like five or six countries. What if I tried to save Ming from dying? Just let the AI explode a little bit and then tag swap to Ming and try to fix things, maybe. I wonder if I could. Well, that's a run for another day. Now, Rapa Nui's done being colonized. And there we go, now we have enough colonial range to reach the Galapagos. Or maybe I would prefer somewhere like Panama. Yeah, I think I would. Well, I may as well visit the Galapagos either way. 1532 when we've met up with the Europeans. Maybe a little bit ahead of schedule. Portugal seems to be doing a lot better than I would have imagined. I don't see Spain for some reason. And that is a 1.2 thousand development France in 1532. How did this happen? And we get gold on the Galapagos? Really? 
Well, I mean, if you're offering, do you ever just wake up some mornings and regret? Yeah, that's this campaign right now. Alright, where was I? Okay, now we have a port across the connection in Panama, so let's build a few more boats. Apparently we can establish tributaries, which is kind of weird, actually. Well, I do have a mission that requires subjects, but they can't be tributaries, so let's see if I can be friends with these guys. While I'm at it, I guess I can also ask these guys for a little bit of knowledge. Not that it's really that useful. Alright, there's the last ship we need. Let's do some exploring in the Caribbean. And the next idea group's a bit of a mystery. I don't think the run's gonna last too long, so maybe offensive? Alright, the Caribbean's looking a little, um, populated, you could say. I'm actually a little more interested in seeing what the coast looks like, though. And I have an additional colonist here, which I'm going to use for something, uh, maybe a little weird. But I'm gonna go ahead and colonize this province over here. I need some way to get these transports to move all the way over to this area. And of course, the Panama Canal did not exist back in the 16th century. So the only way for that to happen would be, well, theoretically moving the boats over land would be much faster, but in our case we're probably going to have to go around the south. Alright, American coast is looking a lot less populated, which works out in our favor. Looks like Norway's here for some reason. Ah yes, hello there my fellow colonial power. I hope you guys don't mind if I take a quick trip up into uh, Eastern America, do you? Now, the first landing spot I would say should be right here. Now the great naval moving plan will begin as we ship these ships down to the south here. Oh god, please no. I see Europe for 0.3 seconds and the game immediately wants me to fight them. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna happen. Alright lads, get comfortable because this is your new home. It'll take a little while to get it all established, but that's okay. Good morning Europe, I wonder how you guys are doing today. I can just imagine, like, Europe is just sitting there chilling, and then these dudes from the middle of nowhere just show up on the coastline, and they already have knowledge about, like, pretty much the entire world. And at the end of the day, literally any of them could just crush me if they wanted to. Alright, now we can vassalize Lenape as well, and that should allow us to finish this mission off here, and this one as well, and this one as well, and finally this one. For the hell of it, I might as well take this one too. And that's the Manhattan Colony. Now, to move your capital into the New World, that's a little bit trickier these days than it used to be. Uh, but if you were wondering why I was gunning for the Galapagos Islands so aggressively, it was because this is one of the best provinces you can use to get yourself into the New World without having to unstate all this stuff over here. So, first we're gonna move our capital over to the Galapagos. Now, you'll notice for now that we actually still can't move our capital, which kinda sucks. But the only reason for that is because we have another province, or another state, which is stated on the same continent. So, instead of having to, you know, unstate a bunch of stuff over here in Oceania, now, with our capital in South America, mind you, it's not in a colonial region, which is why we were able to move it, uh, other similar provinces would be over here in Bermuda, as well as these two provinces down here. So if we go ahead and unstate this over here, we'll see that we should now be able to move our capital. Well, <laughs> I'll need a few more points, but you can see it works. Keep in mind though that because we're moving from a state to another state, we can't, for instance, move our capital into South America because we're going to need a state on the continent as well as this one. And then therefore we'll have two states and then we just won't be able to do it. The only reason this works is that we have one state over here in South America and we'll have one state in North America. And here we go. Now, through conventional methods, it would be a little bit harder for us to move our capital. Let's say, for instance, we didn't have the Galapagos. The way we would have to do this is we'd have to release a vassal over here to take these other provinces. Then we'd have to unstate literally everything else in Oceania and then move our capital. That's generally what you're going to have to do with Europe unless you plan to take province down here and then move your capital into North America or vice versa for South America. And the only other method I could think of is moving the capital over into here and then unstating everything else because then we wouldn't have to give a vassal this territory. Uh, the reason being is that this is the only province within this state that's actually colonized. If I colonized this province or this one, then we would not be able to do that. 
So if you were trying to figure out how to move your capital to the New World, that's pretty much how you're going to do it. Now that our capital is inside of North America, and more specifically, Colonial Eastern America, all we have to do is colonize a few more provinces, and this run will be done. Alright, now we've pretty much explored the entire planet, and I don't have much else to do, so I might as well circumnavigate. In my experience, ships end up dying a lot during this whole thing, so I'm gonna make sure we have some place for them to rest at. Come on, guys. Don't die on me. Well, I gave them a place to stop at, and they really didn't want to stop. Maybe these guys will stop, maybe? Oh god, okay. Alright, what's the problem? You want this stuff? You know what? You can have that stuff. Honestly, I don't even care that much. You can have it. You want my vassal too? I mean, it's kind of cringe, but... And you brought Britain? Okay. Alright, buddy. You're done. That's enough of that. Oh god, oh no. Alright, it's only a matter of time before the Spanish come to do the same, and I don't feel like losing a whole bunch today. So I'm gonna hand over whatever Portugal wants, it just looks like this stuff over here and a little bit of money. Honestly, I couldn't care less. And now that the final colony is complete, we can form the United States of America. Alright, let's give it a day, and there it is. Surfing USA. Gotta say, this is one of the worst things I've ever done. In terms of uh, fun value for this achievement, I'd put it at a solid maybe um, 2 out of 10. The vast majority of your time is going to be spent on speed 5 and just waiting for colonies to finish. So if you have perhaps an extra between 4 to 6 hours to spend and you don't feel like enjoying yourself for a particular evening, uh, then this is definitely an achievement I can recommend for you. But. At least it's done, and I never have to do it ever again. Anyway, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you could. This is Corbett signing off to do something infinitely better than this. And as always, have a fantastic day. Big thanks to the patrons. These people up on screen get early access to videos and also help to support the channel. The link is in the description. If you're looking for more content to watch, I'd recommend these videos up on screen.